Okay, YouTube, in this video, I'm going to be doing a uh, overview on uh, memory choices for the Ryzen CPU lineup. You can see here, Micro Center's got their preview ad going. Uh, you can pre-order it. So there's a lot of uh, comments on Reddit about what to do for memory. A lot of people are saying buy 3200 uh, memory sticks. Others are saying that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Some of them are saying that... Uh, Ryzen is latency heavy or AMD CPUs are, are more sensitive to a better latency as opposed to higher frequency. So we'll make a little table here talking about, we'll, we'll compare like frequency, frequency, timings, or we'll just say latency. Uh, yes, latency. So you can think of the frequency as the, the number in megahertz. So we'll do DDR3 first, because for those coming from DDR3, we're not going to talk about DDR2 or 1, because those are kind of really legacy, really old stuff at this point. They're not really relevant here for the topic of the video. But the concept still applies. So with DDR3, the lowest speed was 1066, and that's in megahertz. Uh, and then ca the cast latency for that was typically like 7 for a decent one. So if you, tr if you calculate the... Performance index. I'll give you guys an easy way in a second here on how to determine the performance index. But basically, for DDR3, the speeds were 1066. That was like the lowest speed. Uh, there may have been one that was a little bit slower than that, but I don't think anyone really ever used it. Uh, then there was 1300, which was the standard for a long time for the Intel CPUs. When DDR3 came out, I think like the first gen i7s and i5s uh, with Nehalem were using like 1333 and 1066. I know in laptops, 1066 was the standard for a long time. Then when Sandy Bridge came out, it went up to 1333. So that's like your your core your core i7 is 6600K. Your oh, not 6600. Your core i7 2600K. That's the Sandy Bridge and the 2500 which is the i5 and then Haswell the generation 4 standardized 1600 as the new de facto standard notice how the cast latency is going up slightly every time I create more RAM timings and then 1866 this is pretty high performance stuff eventually there was 2133 and then 2400 and then anything above 2400 was kind of like no one really cared uh, as far as I remember, I think there was a cast latency like that in 11. So, this is pretty standard stuff. Maybe this one was cast latency 12 or maybe 10. Maybe this one was 11. Um, but the way, the easy way to determine the performance index for these is to take the frequency and divide it by the cast latency. So, that's going to give you a performance index number. Uh, I'll leave a link to a non-text article because they did a really good article. They have a really good table for reference on how to determine good performance memory versus super high-end overclocked memory versus your kind of run-of-the-mill mainstream memory and then your like bottom bin, bargain bin stuff. So yeah, th this is DDR3. So this is typically the performance index. So most people, myself included, we're kind of in the middle because we didn't want to overclock memory. We didn't run a run memory above the standard 1.5 volts. So that would be the voltage. So we'll say, we'll call this column, we'll, we'll say this is performance index, or we'll say the perf index. And then we'll call this the voltage. And I'll remove the V, the v there. So it'll become a number. This is the voltage. So standard DDR3 is 1.5, 1600 is 1.5, 1866 is also 1.5. And then when you get up here, now I will say older memory did run at 1.65 on these other speeds. It was really the 1333 and 1066 that were always 1.5. Uh, but later on they were better bin, they improved manufacturing process. So up to 1866 you could get 1.5 volt memory. So what I actually have with my FX8350 is AMD memory with the AMP, so the AMD memory profile that does actually run at this exact uh, timing and that frequency. 
So that's that's an example of high performance memory. Anything above that is kind of gimmicky in my opinion. I've tried 2400 kits. It's really not worth the money. Um, you'll never really notice the difference in gaming. But that's DDR3. So now moving on to DDR4. So things get a little bit different. So with DDR4, the RAM speeds went up, but the cast latencies also the number went up because they had to loosen the timings to get the higher speed. So the base speed for DDR4, uh, the frequency is 2133, and typically the cache latencies on those would be around like 14, um, maybe better, but that's typically it. And then the same thing, you would do frequency divided by the latency, and that gives you your performance index. So we'll do a couple more of these here. So the next speed up is 2400, then 2666, 2800, 3000, and 3200. So they do go much higher. It, the frequency on DDR4 can scale all the way up into the 4000 range, but we're going to ignore those because, first of all, those are mostly overclocked, and they're not really that good. If you're going to overclock your CPU, you might not be able to reach those high numbers depending on your IMC. So for these, again, you can expect latencies around this range for pretty decent stuff. So we're probably going to go with like this because these are actually values that you can actually uh, obtain. So there's your performance index. And now with DDR4, you also have lower voltage. So you they consume a lot less power. Uh, and then this is where it gets kind of funny because here it gets to 1.35. So again, if you want to run the high speed memory, you're going to be paying more for it. And it's also going to run at a higher voltage, which isn't really guaranteed uh, per Intel. I don't know what AMD's comment is, but I know in the past Intel always advised against running over vaulted memory because it can degrade the IMC over time. So that's why all these people talking about Oh, get 3200 megahertz RAM, it's the best stuff. Honestly, I would say anything above 170 on the performance index is really good. If, after testing a bunch of different uh, SKUs of memory from different manufacturers, all the way from G-Skill to Patriot to Kingston uh, and Corsair, a whole bunch of other memory providers, Samsung, yeah, the 1.5 volt for DDR3 is sufficient. And for DDR4, the 1.2 volt stuff at the highest speed you can get with the best timing is the best deal. So I, I honestly would recommend, especially for those going to Ryzen, it, as an early adopter, I advise getting 2666 at cast latency 15. This is exactly what I have already. So I'm going to be using this uh, for Ryzen. Uh, if you want to save money, of course, you can get 2400 RAM. Um, just for comparison here, if this is tier, if this is the bottom tier, second, third, this is bottom, second, third, so this is still equivalent to 1600. Um, the majority of people on Intel systems are probably running 1600 RAM, because uh, I know I am, and I know that uh, a lot of like laptops and mobile stuff from Dell and Lenovo are all running DDR3 1600, and they're going to be moving to like 2400. Uh, on the mobile side for DDR4, which is the reason why DDR4 memory prices are so insane right now. So if we go look at the real world here, we go look at Micro Center, let's look at desktop memory. Uh, let's see, let's, uh, let's maximize this. So if we look at, uh, you know, DDR4, right? And let's say we want to do 32 gigs on two sticks. Because that's pretty much going to be uh, like enthusiast class uh, amount. Because I think like 16 gigs was the enthusiast class for DDR3. So obviously if you're going to upgrade, you want to go to the next size up. So that's 32 gigs on two sticks. That leaves you with an upgrade path to 64, which would be the maximum supported on uh, X370 boards. So you're kind of looking at these sort of prices. So you can see it is really expensive. This is kind of like slightly better than what DDR4 was when X99 first came out back in 2014. Um, and that's all because of the multiple things. Demand curve is going way up. Mobile devices are going to be are all migrating to DDR4. 
like Samsung Galaxy S8, all the new iPhone, all that kind of stuff are all going to be using DDR4 RAM. There was a supply issue. There was some kind of factory fire in China that messed up the supply line. So, yeah. So anyway, guys, that was a quick video on DDR4 RAM. Uh, like I said, I recommend getting 26, anywhere from 2400 to, I would say about... 3000 if you really want to overclock and you want to run that 1.35 volts then go for 3200 anything above 3200 is honestly not really worth it at this point so hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll catch you guys in the next one thanks